Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning. Good morning. I'm Julian Skeet and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. Coming to you here live from Comfort Inn and Suites located in Scarborough, Tobago. It is Thursday, Carnival Thursday here in Tobago. And this is the Tobago October Carnival 2023. And, you know, we're always doing things that are, you know, ensuring that we make those connections nationally, regionally, and internationally to continue to provide for you. And this morning, uh, we have the opportunity that we are also connecting with TTT. So we're also live on TTT this morning for the Tobago Updates morning show as we continue to bring you all things Carnival here happening on the island. I'm told that we got rockers in studio and Didi, my very good friend Didi, across there at the Shaw Park Complex. Good morning to you, indeed. But viewers, at this time, we're heading into our first uh, segment this morning as we chat with Ricardo Bob, and he is the Public Health Inspector for, and yes, certainly very important and crucial topic, even as we head on out to have a good time uh, for the carnival season. Good morning to you and welcome. Good morning, Julian. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and um, wherever you're looking, it's a pleasure to be here to share with you what we've been doing in terms of um, public health and food because you know as much as people are coming to enjoy themselves they have to eat yes very <laughs> important at that so we want to start off basically in terms of that overall responsibility for public health at a time like now during the carnival season in particular yeah well we've had a tremendous drive especially this year we've had a no tolerance policy in terms of our festivals and food handling as a matter of fact um, we have registered over 5,000 food handlers for the year um, today is actually our last session before the, the carnival season. So if you have not gotten your food handler's registration badge, today is the last day that you'll be able to get it before the festival. But what we found is that more and more people are complying because as we go to the, the festivals and we do that which is our responsibility, helping you to actually be safer, we found that more people are participating. So um, this year has been our highest registration for the past like 10 years. Tell us a little bit about that greater responsibility for the person coming to, you know, in, in order to request or to apply for uh, that permission to be able to go out there and to do sales. Uh, what's that greater responsibility like on the part of the individual who will be preparing items, etc., setting up their space and ensuring that it is compliant? Well, the thing is, once you are offering food for sale, you have a responsibility to protect those who you serve. Um, usually, I have a philosophy that if you're not prepared to consume the food that you prepare, you shouldn't serve it to anyone. <laughs> That's beside the legal obligation. And so part of that process is that you must be a registered food handler. The law provides for that. And um, to become a registered food handler, you must um, come to the health department. You do a medical certificate, um, a medical examination from a recognized doctor. And we give you an appointment to come. On that day, you will be getting some health education. The cost of the badge is still very small, only $20. Could you imagine that? The lowest in the country, as a matter of fact. And um, you're certified, and you get your food badge. You can sell food anywhere in Tobago. Um, just on that as well, what we encourage is those who are organizing um, activities and events, you should only allow people who are registered food handlers. That is another safeguard we could have as well. So. There are several levels that people can actually um, have safety in terms of food. So not just anybody come to your festival and sell. You must ensure that those who are coming would have um, their food handler's registration. And of course, we check out the festivals as well. So they know that we are coming. So from the time we start coming to the festivals, people start shaping up because they know if they're not in compliance. So, so that was precisely my next question. Is this a case that we just grant a badge and hope that they do well straight into the weekend? No. Or there are those pop-up <laughs> visits to ensure that persons are complying as required? That's right. Um, we do the festivals as well. And, you know, people remember uh, we do the, um, the, the festivals during the holidays and the carnival and so on. As a matter of fact, some people have been very mad with us for doing our jobs. And what they fail to realize is that we are protecting them. Not just protecting them, but the destination have a reputation to, to preserve as well. It only takes one issue to throw this entire thing you know, in array. And every person has a, have a responsibility. Those who are selling food, those who are purchasing food, and the authorities as well. So all of us come together. We are not 
We are not um, at odds. We are not enemies. We all have a responsibility. And if people do the right thing, then we wouldn't have a problem. We we'll just so, have to monitor. So I want to look at it now from the perspective of, you know, the patrons, those enjoying the season. Uh, what kind of responsibility would you say are placed on those individuals as they go to the spaces and places to acquire food? What should they look out for as some, you know, that they must have uh, before you purchase from particular vendors? Well, number one, you should have your food handler's registration displayed. They shouldn't have to ask for it. It's in your bag or in your pocket. It should be displayed so they can see it. That's number one. Then you're looking for um, hygienic things. Um, in terms of the person, the person have their hair restrained. Um, they are well attired, as you say. No um, sleeveless and pum pum shorts. Yeah, we know it's the season. But for the people who are selling food, that's not for you. Um, we're looking at hot holding and cold holding facilities based on what you are, you are selling. We're looking at um, hygiene in terms of your surroundings. You know, those are important things. Um, so the, 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 those who are preparing and selling the food, they should look the part because you remember you cannot, you cannot see microbes, you cannot see germs. So one of the things that is important is your hygiene, your physical hygiene, your temperature management. We're talking about your hot foods hot and your cold foods cold. Those are some of the areas you, you would want to look at. All right. And we also want to remind the persons, all these persons should have a badge displayed. Yes. In some way, form or fashion. Now, yes. I know the issue has been over time. Uh, in the past, you probably could have had five or six people assisting and only one needed a food badge. Has that been updated or is that still... Tell us, tell us what the arrangement is in that case. Everybody. <laughs> Somebody who is taking your cash somebody who is assisting, everybody who is associated with food must be a registered food handler. So there's no exception where um, people would have done it in the past. That was never the principle. Everybody is supposed to have their food badge. All right. What's available for persons who may have concerns or may want to report someone that, you know, that they've observed, they've probably raised an issue and they've been disregarded? Uh, what, what avenue is available to those individuals? All right. So usually we take all issues seriously. Um, you can call 639-1433, 639-1433 if you want to lodge a complaint in terms of what you may have seen because sometimes um, people lodge complaints because of other kinds of interactions. Um, I want to encourage the, those especially who are preparing food. Remember, we are, you, are, you are serving people, so be pleasant. Let people see the wonderful side of Tobago. It's not that don't be like, you know, I don't care. No. The patrons, the money is in the patron's pocket before it gets into yours. <laughs> and the food business thrives on happy returning customers. Therefore, we want to have a wonderful experience at all our festivals, um, all our food service um, outlets as well. All right. What would be that clear and distinct message you would certainly uh, want to leave with those who will be responsible for providing sales uh, of food items during the season, as well as for those who will be consuming and enjoying? Consider the health of everyone, yours and the ones that you serve. And remember that because we can't see microbes, we must take those precautions, those hygiene precautions, whether it be of the personal hygiene or in terms of the food hygiene that we have taught all year, we've been teaching all year. Practice, practice, practice. And if you're tired of practicing them, then it means the food business is not for you. You need to find something else, maybe road paving or construction. Those don't require much Some other hygiene. area. Some <laughs> other area. But once it's food, you have to do the same thing over and over again. It must become a part of you, second nature. So very quickly, for the benefit of those who are tuned in, who are prepared going out to sales, didn't realize they still had an opportunity, uh, remind them where they can come to. And I think you said they have until today. Is it today or well, tomorrow? Today is the, no, no, not, today. not tomorrow at all. Today, today is was the, the last day. You should have already had your appointment, as a matter of fact. And what we're doing, we have two sessions today that um, we are doing. Those people have had appointments, and we've been driving this all year, so nobody has any excuse. Oh, so why the outreach efforts not. have been going throughout the year? Throughout the year, so nobody has an excuse why they should not have their food badge. And remember, if you see something out there, because there are only so many public health inspectors, then please let us know 639 1433, and we'll definitely All right. check remind it out. us of that number again 639 1433. All right. I want you to tell us a little bit before we close off this morning in relation to the education efforts to really get that information out there. I'm very happy to hear you say that this has been going in terms of all year long. Yes. Uh, tell us about the efforts of the department in that regard to really seek to inform and to educate uh, those on the outside. All right. So now through the communications department, we have uh, the five keys of food safety that is out there. You can go on the, um, the division website. You can also come to the office. 
if you want to have that kind of information, even if you have, let's say, uh, an enterprise, and you would want to have some education, special education, you can come and talk to us, and we will be able to arrange that for you. Uh, the thing is, we want to utilize um, every opportunity to help people to understand, because the food safety principles are not simply for the business. It's for life. So it's not that you do something and, uh, else in this aspect of your life, and then when you're doing food for sale, you do something else. The principles are important for life. Excellent. Remind our viewers again about the numbers as we speak before we close today. 639-1433, or some people may say 1433. Ah, excellent. <laughs> uh, viewers, uh, we want to say thank you very much uh, to Ricardo Bob for joining us here on set this morning. Public Health Inspector Four. so you may see him in and around. But it's not to enjoy the festivities he's ensuring that he, along with his entire department, and that the persons who carry these badges and have taken on that responsibility, that they are indeed complying as required uh, to ensure our continued safety. In the words of one of our viewers, excellent at that, Carl Hector. Thanks, Brother Bob. We can't play with our health. And so we want to say thank you very much. And the viewers at this point, we're preparing to head on out a break, but we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live.